Staples is proud to produce the Raising Cannabis Capital podcast. Today's episode will begin after this brief message from our sponsor. This ain't no desk job, but it's what you got to do to scale up to this in a single growing season. It's how in Oregon alone, we grew and harvested the single largest crop of CBG in the world. Grit, tenacity, hell, whatever you want to call it, the crew at Hampton USA has it by the bucket load. Just getting our seeds in the ground back in spring and growing them till fall was nothing short of heroic. Propagation, planting, maintaining what we have, and building what we need. Trust me, this shit ain't easy. But when it comes to harvest time, our team bumps the bar up to a whole new level. Next comes processing. Everything but the top flower goes off to get turned into crude, distillate, isolate, and water-soluble ready. Our product, like our team, is nothing less than best in class. This plant has always had the power to change the world, but it needs people to make it happen. We're lucky to have those people right here at Hamptown, USA. think about what the benefits to crowdfunding are, one of the biggest, in addition to the capital that you raise, is the exposure to our 100,000 plus investor base to your product. And I think an added layer that a lot of companies take advantage of is if you've got it already have an engaged customer base who's really passionate about what you do, a lot of times companies want to allow those folks to be able to participate in the upside of the, of the business. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today at the Cannabis Investor Spotlight Series, we are joined by Brett Andrews with Micro Ventures. Brett, welcome to the MJ Bulls Podcast. Thanks for having me, Dan. Happy to be here. I'm excited. Like a lot of our listeners are really, really curious about crowdfunding. I know Micro Ventures is a broker dealer equity crowdfunding platform. So let's begin with crowdfunding because I think everyone kind of knows a little bit about crowdfunding, but most people I don't know are still comfortable enough to use it. Can we just start there? Just kind of give us the, the, the 101 on crowdfunding. Yeah, of course. So I guess first off, just a little background on the company itself. So MicroVentures has been in business for about 10 years now. Over that period, we've raised roughly $200 million for around 250 companies. Currently have an investor base of a little over 100,000. 75% of those folks are non-accredited, so they're sort of your mom-and-pop retail investors, and then the other 25% are accredited investors. So we do, as do we do, three types of deals typically. Late-stage secondaries, companies like Uber, Airbnb, Lyft, you know, a lot of the tech names that you've heard, the unicorns, uh, will come to us with early toy stock options that they want to liquidate prior to an IPO and and we'll negotiate a price and then offer that to our accredited investors only because it's a private offering. The other two types of deals that we do are private primary 506 raises. So this is direct investments into companies, still crowdsourced, but only through our private accredited network, and then public crowdfunding offerings, which are available to our the entire 100,000-plus investor base. Okay. So if to say there's this, a startup, walk us through the process, how a company would go about using micro ventures to initiate a crowdfunding raise. Whether you connect with, with me or someone else here or you come to the website, the first step is typically a phone call, learn a little bit more about the company, we usually go through a pitch deck, and then we kind of assess on our side what type of deal it would be the best fit for. So we have weekly meetings where we talk about the deals that we've reviewed We have a committee meeting and decide which ones that we think are going to be a fit and which path is best. So that's usually the first part of the process. I see some of the deals that are on your website right now where they're raising somewhere between $50,000 and a million dollars. Walk us through how that works 
So, so the deals that you're seeing on our website or that are live are the versions of the public crowdfunding offering. So usually we're looking for something that's already producing revenue. So they've got a product that's out in the market, got some sales to show that there's a, there's a need and there's a want by the market for the product. We also like consumer-facing products for the public. If you think about what the benefits to crowdfunding are, one of the biggest, in addition to the capital that you raise, is the exposure to our 100,000-plus investor base to your product. And I think an added layer that a lot of companies take advantage of is if you've got to already have an engaged customer base who's really passionate about what you do, a lot of times companies want to allow those folks to be able to participate in the upside of the, of the business. So there are companies that come to us and say, not only do we want to raise funds and we want to market to your investor base, but we'd like to have our customers be able to participate in this. And so then they can sign up and invest as well. And I see some of them will say there's 38 days left and shows how much they've raised so far, how many investors are involved. I mean, it's, it's very comprehensive. Yeah, we try to track the amount that's been raised, the number of investors that's involved. Usually our, our public raises go for about 60 days. That's usually the max that we put on it. Obviously, if we hit the goal sooner, then we can close it up sooner, but that's typically the max deadline. Yeah, and some of them I see, it looks like they've exceeded their goal because some, you know, like this one is 462% and this one's 115% of goal. So there's opportunities yeah. to go beyond. How do you do the valuations? This would be the big question that people are curious <laughs> about is how do I know what the valuation of these are? you're talking about from an investment perspective, if you click on any one of those active raises and open up into their campaign page, our DD team actually puts that together. The terms of the raise are negotiated between us and the company. The startup's a little bit more of an art than a science at this early stage, but we see a lot of them, so we have a good feel for what the market will bear in terms of valuation. But if you're an investor and you click on one of those offerings, you can scroll down and all of them will show the term sheet. I want to take a minute to tell you about some really innovative things that our sponsor, Cream of the Crop, is doing in the cannabis space. Their brand is on fire. They have the fifth best-selling indoor flower brand in the state, and they're profitable, growing their business at 10% a month year-to-date. They're succeeding by helping cultivators turn profits through operation management and consulting in exchange for supply agreements. By bringing 30-plus years of cultivation experience, award-winning genetics, ultra-efficient SOPs, proprietary nutrient mixes, and their brand, they're able to help both operators who are new to the space and ones who want to just increase efficiency. In fact, they just increased profits for one of their clients by $700,000 per month. Just incredible. But what's really exciting is that they're expanding their highly scalable model beyond California. That's right, they're accepting applications across the country for 2021 and 2022 partnerships. Also, if you're planning to invest in cannabis, you should definitely look at Cream of the Crop because they're doing a capital round in early 2021 to help with their brand's national expansion. To learn more about partnering with Cream of the Crop or investing in their expansion, go to creamofthecropgardens.com. That's creamofthecropgardens.com. Let's switch gears. We've been talking about the companies that are raising money. Let's talk about the investors who are part of your 100,000 investor group. How do they become an investor? Yeah, so it's a pretty simple process. If you go over to our website, you can create an account. If you do mark that you're accredited, we have an investor relations team here in-house. Their job, in addition to fielding questions from investors about specific deals, is to vet out those folks and make sure you know they actually meet the the government requirement of being accredited. If you do meet that mark, then you'll have access to not only the public raises that we have listed on our platform, but the private deals, which are behind, you know, I use the term paywall. It's not really that because they're not paying to see them, but they are behind sort of a privacy wall. So if you, if your mark is accredited, you have access to all the deals on our platform. But if you're a non-accredited investor and you're looking to participate in the public offerings, it's a really simple sign-up process. So you can go over there and just create an account and, and it'll walk you through pretty easily. Yeah, I see. I'm, I'm on this one company that's raising capital. Minimal investment of $101. So it's, it's not like that you need to have a lot of money. Yeah, generally our, on the public raises, our minimum investments, I think almost in almost all cases are a hundred, and so yeah, you can get involved for uh, as little as a hundred. It's not too much to participate in companies that, that you're passionate about. 
And then when it comes time to cash out, how does that work? Yeah, so Micro Ventures works as the intermediary for all of that and, and transfer agent. So when there is an, an exit event and we have, you know, our in-house team will deal with the disbursement of funds. We also do the disbursement of information. So, you know, one of the concerns from a company standpoint is am I going to deal with, you know, having hundreds of people who own small portions of my company wanting to get information every other week. The way we handle that is they share information with us and then we disperse it out to the crowd of investors that we've sourced. Okay. Before we wrap this up, let's talk about cannabis investments. Companies that are raising in the cannabis industry, if they're raising money, can they participate? We do. We're actually very interested in that space right now, as many investors are. I do want to clarify, we don't actually invest in any companies that are touching the flower. So anyone who's manufacturing, growing, distributing, or retailing, unfortunately, at the moment, we're out. But for right now, we are actively looking at companies that are uh, providing ancillary products and services to the cannabis industry. Very bullish on it. Our investors have been wanting to get involved in those for a while. We actually have some discretionary funds in addition to our crowdfunding platform that that we look for specific verticals. Cannabis happens to be one of them. So yeah, right now we've got a couple deals in the pipeline that we hope will launch fairly soon here, which will be our sort of first foray in, into the industry, and we're really excited about it. Well, we're going to have all of MicroVentures information on the MJ Bulls website. This is good stuff, and I, I'm glad that you clarified some of the stuff with crowdfunding because I know a lot of companies would be perfect for this. I suspect if they want more information or do a little deeper dive, I'm sure you'll be happy to speak to them. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I always say is it's a new form of funding. Is, so there's a lot of education that still needed to be done, both on the investor side and, and the company side. Our CEO, Bill Clark, writes a lot of good posts that you can find on our website. If anyone does have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, whether it's a phone call or through email. Sounds good. Well, Brett, thanks for being on the show, and I really appreciate you taking the time to explain this to us. Likewise. I appreciate it, Dan. It's been great. Crappy's Feel Better Company is a cannabinoid CPG company with a line of easy-to-use CBG, CBD, and CBN products built for the weekend warriors, the weekday Zoomers, and anyone in between. Crappy's next-gen products incorporate pharmaceutical-derived chemistry to precisely blend minor cannabinoids and terpenes, creating a series of proprietary formulas for hyper-targeted use cases. Harnessing a team of experts with over 75 combined years of chemistry experience, the company relies on its novel solubility technology, state-of-the-art delivery, consistent results, and unique eye-catching branding to stand out from the crowd. Crappy's executive team and chemists have created a vast and diverse product pipeline to maintain relevance in a saturated market. To find out how you can participate in Crappy's Feel Better expansion, which includes major retail placements, university-executed clinical trials, IP and patent submissions, GMP and API scale-up, and international distribution? Go to crappiesfeelbetter.com or on Instagram at crappiesfeelbetter. Today's show was made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Alt36, the country's premier blockchain payment processing platform that's providing dispensaries and its customers with a safe and secure payment option other than cash. To learn more, go to alt36.com.